had a good reading month this month. I read nine books. I, I thought it was gonna be ten. I thought it was ten. I feel like maybe I could be missing a book or I can just be wishful thinking. <laughs> And I'm also going to share with you my TBR from April. I know it looks tiny, but I'm going to explain why. So let's jump into these books that I read for March. Um, March was a really good reading month, for, reading month for me because I enjoyed all, like all of the books that I read, I enjoyed tremendously. I think I do have one three star. Um, but if you want to see my reviews, because I said I'm not going to talk about my reviews, uh, like my what I rated the books, I'm just going to kind of tell you about the book. Um, but if you want to check out what I rated the book, you can check out my Goodreads. It's linked down below. I do update it all we all month long because I update it with like my ratings. I'm not a big like typing out my rating like I don't like usually put a rating in there but I didn't know that you like your highlights from your Kindle can go to your Goodreads so I am going to link that up because I just thought that was really cool so you can kind of like see the things that I liked in the book and then as well see my rating. My phone here um to tell you because I read a lot of books on my Kindle this month. Also decided that I'm pretty much a mood reader and it's because I tend to like if I find a book and it sounds really good at the moment I literally start it right away and then I end up like having five books that I've started and then I don't finish any of them. That happens a lot. Matter of fact I have like at least three books that I've opened up and began like read the first chapter of and I'm not. I haven't like gone any further because I got sucked into another book. <laughs> Starting at the beginning of the month, I started off with a book called "We Where We Found Our Home by Natasha Bishop. Um, and I read that on my Kindle. I found it on my Kindle. I found it because of one of the girls that I enjoy watching, Alex. Um, she mentioned it in one of her blogs. And I loved Natasha Bishop from when I read Only for the Week. And I was like, okay, I want to read some more. I want to read some more from this author. And I read this and I freaking loved it. It is, uh, there's three books total in the series, but they're, they're standalones, I believe, or interconnected standalones where it's like a friend of, I think it's a guy friend group and each of them have their book. So the first book is about Lincoln. I don't know if you can see Lincoln here. The main character of the book her name is Sierra. Her name is Sierra. So in the beginning of the book, he comes in and you find out that Sierra has just moved to a new town uh, in Texas, I believe. She's just moved to Texas and she doesn't want to make friends. She doesn't want to find anyone. She just wants to be by herself and write her book and just be alone because something has happened to her in her past in the, from, in the state that she left from. Something bad happened and she just wants to be by herself. She's another reason why she left her home because she doesn't want her her friends or her family to be hurt because of her decisions and the things that are going on in her life. So she's like, okay, I got to get out of here. I got to get away from my people that I love. And I'm going to move to this town and I'm going to be secluded. And of course that doesn't work because enter Lincoln. They meet because of an unfortunate circumstance, but they do meet right away. And um, they're immediately attracted to each other. It's not an insta love. It's more of a friends to lovers. And it is so good the way it is done. I, Natasha Bishop is just elite. She really is elite. She's about to be my auto buy, like my first, my first auto buy, my first, because I was gonna, I was gonna say Kenny and Ryan, but I only own two books from her and I love them, but I don't want to read anything else just because the, the synopsis of those other books kind of make me nervous. But anyway, that's to Natasha Bishop. I really think she's about to be an auto buy author for me because her, just her books just feel good and she puts in the right like twists and turns and the right like moments of the plot in the book that just make you want to read more. Also something really cool about this book is there is um I guess a bad guy for lack of a better term because you know that Sierra is running away from someone and we actually get his perspective which is it that shocked me because there's nothing um on the back of the book that says that but I also wanted to say it because that's really like the, I think it's like the key thing that like hooked me on this book was when we got that perspective and I was like what so it was really good it was really good and I, I'm not a big mystery girl I'm not a big thriller girl but that poor like just getting that insight in the book just made me want to read it even more Lincoln was he was just delectable. He was a delectable man, a firefighter. Um, so like he's described as like this big, big guy, you know, takes up presence, handsome, of course, just tall, dark and handsome. Okay, all the things that you want in a book boyfriend. Okay. And he, he, 
I want I don't want to say he doesn't have a Superman syndrome. He does, but he's super realistic about it. And I think that was also something that's why I enjoyed the book so much because he was like, this is what I do for a living. I'm a firefighter. And in the, the people in my life know that about me, you know, so and they just have to be okay with it. And so like, just I thought that was just really real. And then Sierra, like she just loved her family and she loved her friends and the people around her. And she just didn't want anybody to get hurt because of her. Like whatever her situation was, like whatever she was going through, she just didn't want it to affect other people's lives. So I thought that was, that was just really genuine. And just the story just develops from there. So the next book, I also read this on my Kindle. This was, um, and I think I did half Kindle, half audiobook for this one. This was Pride and Protest by Nikki Payne. She also released a book this month called Sex, Lies, and Sensibilities, I think. Sex, Lies, and Sensibilities, I believe it's called. So, um, and that's like this her second, well, the second book in this little series. I think it's like a Jane Austen series because that's the first one it, and the second one. They're both Jane Austen retellings. So I listened to this book and I read it and it was really good. The main character of the book was Liza um, and she was a radio host, like a pod, like a podcast, like radio host. And she made like she made like playlists and she would talk about like things that were going on in the community and stuff like that. So one of the things that's going on is that there's a developer that's coming to um, coming to build luxury apartments. And so obviously the community is really upset because the community itself is kind of like a lower income community and they feel like they're just bringing in these high income homes and they're just going to kick the other people out of the, the area and enter Dor uh, Dorsey. I believe it was Dorsey. Dorsey. He is the son of the developer, but the developer died. And then he, like his son kind of like took over his, took over his, um, his work. And he is, it's also really different because he's adopted. So, and, but he's like in this place of being like the protege of his son, of his father's legacy. So, um, that was an interesting portion of the story as well, because you get a lot of like, you know, can he be what his father needed him to be? He's not what other people expect him to be, you know, but he wants to be his own man. He's finding himself. And then Liza, she's trying to find her way. Her mother just wants her to have a man. She has a sister who is, you know, beautiful and just gets everything she wants. And she's kind of trying to finally finding a man. So there's all of that is going on at the same time as Liza and Dorsey hating each other but then still getting to know each other so like I said it's a Pride and Prejudice story so the whole storyline of Pride and Prejudice you get in this book but it's written by a black author so you get um a little bit of that so it's just really interesting the way Nikki Payne wrote it and I loved how like the twist in the stories and how she brought in certain elements of Pride and Pe Prejudice and made it with this story it was really good um Honey and Spice now this book I remember I had the physical book and then I had the audiobook and it was because this physical book I was struggling to get through it because this author uh, uh Balu Babiola Baba Babalola Balu Babalola she, like her writing it's so much like poetry it's so much like poetry and it's beautiful. I particularly, I used to read poetry all the time when I was younger and I, I don't know why I got into it, but I did and I, I loved it. But for me, like novel and poetry is two different things. So it was hard for me to get into the novel, um, but it was beautiful. Met this girl with the sharpest, sweetest mouth and the biggest heart, soft and tough, shy and bold, beautiful man so beautiful and she made me want it really want it and I figured that's why people do it right be vulnerable and shit because they want to be close to the person who makes it worth it it's about connecting with someone who makes you want to try and she makes me want to try just poetry oh my gosh oh my gosh and then when I, like I said I was having a hard time getting through reading it and then I started listening to the audio and it was perfect oh my god it was perfect so they it, it, it's set in i believe it, it's i believe it's somewhere in london maybe just somewhere in england because they had english accents but they're nigerian they're nigerian uh, descent so you know they're both not i think i think they're both nigerian so the the um on the audio the people who are reading the audio are also english like they have an english accent but they're nigerian so it, i i it's got to be a term for it i don't know but 
just their voices were perfect and then th like the reading the way the book read just true poetry oh my god it was so good it was one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to ever and because of how the voices were and the flow and like how they spoke and <sighs> it was so cute so this book is Kiki and Malachi Kiki is a podcaster. She has a podcast called Brown Sugar and it's about um, basically women just being strong and being women and not letting men drag them down with their just their want from them back for lack of a return. Like you know men want women and they sometimes they do stupid stuff to get women you know so Kiki was like encouraging women to just stay strong and being a woman to remember that you're the prize and the man is got to come after you right. And then enter Malachi he's new to the school and um, they're like in university they're in um, college and they he's new to the school and they get hooked up because um, something happens where she uses him as a scapegoat and then they end up fake dating which is on the back of the book so fake dating is like my favorite trope favorite favorite trope but this was just so done so good and like literally this audiobook I would listen to this audiobook again just because how they how like how the voices were and like the speaking and like the parts where there was high emotion like you felt it in the book it was so good it was so good I loved this story oh my god the favorite thing about this is he had a nickname for her and it was scotch and it was because of the scotch bonnet and he was like scotch they have so much flavor but they're just so hot and so but then his accent he would call her scotch and I was like <laughs> it was so good I'm like getting chills just thinking about it oh my god it was so good Next, I read the infamous this could be us by Kennedy Ryan this book right here, I have a reading vlog on it. Go watch my reading vlog and it'll just tell you about how much I truly love this book. Like truly love this book. It was so good. Just just top tier. Kennedy Ryan. So this book is about Soledad. She is um, a wife and a mother and something happens between her and her husband because he's a clown and they end up splitting up and getting a divorce and she has to now take care of her kids herself. So she's struggling with that. She is struggling with finding herself, loving herself. And then enter Mr. Judah Cross. Judah is a also a single dad, but because his him and his wife um, split up mutually because they are just struggling. They're having a hard time just being together, but they also want to need to be there for their kids. So they also have two kids who are autistic. Um, this is such good, such good autism rep. Uh, such a good single mom rep, such a good loving yourself. Like this is what this is. It's a love story of Soledad with herself. And then, then it's a love story of Soledad and Juna, Joda, Judah. So good. So good. This, uh, just go watch my reading vlog if you want to know more. But this was a fire. Next book I read was We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. This is, um, a, this is, a, I was very heavy on the self uh, self-help books this month. I think I read three of them. Really good. Like it, it was, it really just breaks down things you can do to increase your income, things you can do in your, in your current job now to earn, or like if you're creating a side hustle to make more money and on like just breaks it, really breaks it down for you. Like gives you a workbook and everything. I really enjoyed that uh, self-help book. And then going along with that, I read uh, six six figure side hustle. So this was more like in depth through the side hustle portion of, of Rachel Rogers books, like giving you the exact, exact things to do to create a side hustle, even like breaking down like things that you could be thinking about side hustles that you may not have thought about that you could do and all that really enjoyed this book. And since we're talking about self help, I'll talk about the last self help book I read, which was I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Satie. As satai I think maybe um that that was really good because this more talks about like on the Dave Ramsey side of things where you know you need to have an emergency fund you need to have retirement set up you need to invest why investing is important how I can like he shows you how like how to invest the things that looked for for me I need that because I don't know anything I feel like I feel like I don't know anything about 401ks and investing and all that and it just makes me nervous not knowing but knowing I need to do it. So this book I'm on it. I am on it. He is literally in the beginning he talks about he has a six week program and basically it's just 
tasks to do within six weeks to just set yourself up for for success for retirement to making sure you have money when you decide to stop working and all that um but also not just when you decide to stop working how you can be good with your money now so I loved that I'm, I'm just I don't know why like I'm really been into like finance books and like figuring out that, um how to be good with my money and, and the best things I can do with my money and all of that so really enjoying that I loved that book and I'm going to be doing the six week program in there so I'm excited to get into that and like share a little bit with you guys about it uh because I really loved it I really love that. The last two books I have are fantasy. One is a physical book and one was on my Kindle. This is Beasts of Prey by um, Ayana Gray. This was a fantasy book about a girl. Her name is Kofi and she, her and her mother work at the night zoo. Uh, and the night zoo is beasts, just all kinds of beasts that don't look like regular beasts. Like, you know, like a, a, lion with wings and um a snake with a head of an elephant was another one like just weird beasts right so she works at the night zoo with her mom because she owes the zookeeper a debt um so they're working some there's a crazy night and then there's a fire her and her mom try to escape and they get um caught by the, um the boy what was his name her names were african so that it just got me confused sometimes Kofi and Ekon or Eki is what they called him. Being caught by Ekon and Ekon's friend. Well, not really friend because he wasn't his friend. And Ekon is a warrior in the town where Kofi lives. And he is also battling with his own types of demons. He keeps hearing the night the night forest i think it's what it's called but he, he keeps hearing voices from the forest uh all because something bad happened when he was younger with the forest and it's just I, like it affects his mind he also has ocd i'm pretty sure it's ocd where he counts all the time like when he's walking he wants to end on a good number he wants you know things to be in line in the right number he uses counting to calm his mind so kofi and ekon get wrapped up together because Ekon failed his warrior test and Kofi ha it wants to get out of the debt to the zookeeper. So they come up with this plan to go into the forest and to find this beast that everyone says is, is killing everyone and they're going to capture the beast and going to bring it back to the night forest. This will give them glory or um, recognition within the town and Ekon can become a warrior and Kofi will be free from her debt. And of course it doesn't end up like that. This book, I was, I got a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie. There was a moment, like it, it scared me. There was a creepy moment. I don't like spiders. There was a spider moment. Whew. This was just an all around fantasy, like the tiniest bit of romance, just the tiniest bit. Like it was, it was more like there was tension the whole time. But this was about the story of the beast, and then you find out like what's really going on. Like there's a little like un like underplot or like just a little bit of tidbit of like oh wow that's not what I took the type situation um and it was good it was good I enjoyed this book there is a second to the book and I have it I bought both of the books when my first trip into books a million um over the summer or not over the summer last fall and I bought both of the books because they're both on like the bargain price table and I wanted to have more black authors on my bookshelf so I saw them and I was like well I love you good fantasy so we're gonna try this and it was good I definitely would recommend it if you like these types of books. Um, it was also YA. I didn't know it was YA until I started reading it. And they're like, I think they're like 16 or 17. They're like 16 or 17. So um, that would be like the only thing. Like I, sometimes I have a hard time with YA books just because they're YA. And like the people, the usually the main character is a girl and she's annoying because she just doesn't think things through. So there's that. <laughs> but it, that, it was good. The other fantasy I read was Ashes and the Star Cr Cursed King. So I read this. Oh, this is by Carissa Broadbent on my Kindle. This is another popular Kindle book that I found. I don't know, I think through like book talk or TikTok or something like that. Um, I don't know, something, I, I think that's how I came across it. I read the first book in the series in January. Yes, in January. And I paused reading it, the next book in February because I wanted to read more black authors in February. So I stopped reading that. Uh, that series and then I just jumped like into it and boy am I glad I did I really enjoyed this fantasy and then there's another one that's getting ready to come out not getting ready to I think it comes out in November 
comes out in November of this year. And it was really good. I enjoyed it. The, like I said, it's the second in the in the series. So I can't, if I give, if I talk about it, it gives a, a little too much away. But um, the girl's name is Aurora. Is it Aurora? Aurea? It's like O-R-Y-A? Aurea maybe? I don't know how you would pronounce it, honestly. In my mind, I was calling her Aurea. So, and then... <laughs> Uh, the guy's name is Rain. And um, this is a vampire story. So vampires and humans, of course, you know, the vampires um, drink from the humans. They don't treat them very nicely. Um, the humans have like, they're supposed to be protected, but nobody really protects them. They just, you know, kill them willy nilly. And then here comes Aurea or Aurora. Aurora. I really wish I knew how to pronounce it, but here she comes and she basically is a killer of vampires and her father doesn't know that she killed vampires because he is teaching her to protect herself, but not teaching her to kill his people because her father is a vampire. So, um, in the first book, you kind of get the rundown of this. And then the second book is just a continuation. Like I said, it's going to give it away if I talk about it, but I enjoyed this book. I enjoyed it. But in the beginning, I was so annoyed with her because she was mad at Rain. And Rain was just trying to do... Rain. Rain's a vampire. And granted, he's a turned vampire, not a born vampire, right? So there's rules to this. This is why I love fantasy. Because there's so many rules. <laughs> there's so many rules and like things happening and going on. And you're just like huh, should I be, should I be paying attention to this? Yes, you should. And then, and then it's like, well, why is this happening? What's going on? It's just, I love fantasy. But anyway, Rain is a turned vampire. So the, so born vampires really don't like him, but he's also in a position of power. So he is trying to, he's trying to be with Aurora in the sense of he agrees that the, the, the vampire shouldn't be teaching, treating the humans so badly, you know, so he wants to help her and he wants to help her help the, to help the humans and, and not be against the vampires, but just kind of bring the vampires to what understanding, like you got to treat them right, you know? So, um, and he always is trying to just show her this and then show her also how much he loves her. I love books like this where guys are just like so into the girl and like, just really wanting to be about her, just really wanting to be about her and like show her that he just loves her. Oh my God. It was just so heartfelt. And she wasn't trying to have it. She was, she, she was an emotional wreck. Okay. Because she just didn't want to be with him. She just didn't want to be with him on principle, you know, like because he was a vampire, but she, she loves him. She loves him. Like, why not be with him? Yo, like, why are we doing this? <laughs> I enjoyed that. That didn't, that book didn't annoy me as much as the other book where it was just like, girl, you know you want to be with this man. But um, so yeah, that was good. I Like I said, I love me a good fantasy, okay? I think I want to get into more fantasies. I got a couple of good fantasy because my CBR is a little crazy. It's gotten under control, okay, on the Goodreads, all right? It's at like one 119 right now, okay? But there's a couple of fantasies on here. So Reign of Shadows and Endings. I was watching Booked and Busy. Uh, I think her name is Erin from Booked and Busy. She was talking about this book. Pretty good ratings, 4.1. And then A Heart of Blood and Ashes. Yes! Um, I don't even know where I was, but I did want to talk about a little bit about like what I want to read for uh, April. So I don't really have a full TBR because I want to read so many things and I feel like I'm a big mood reader. I didn't know, like I didn't know these terms. Okay. I'm new here. I'm already new to book talk and all that and booktube. I'm new to booktube and all of these terms. So uh, basically a mood reader is just reads whatever they're on their mood. Um, but of course I still have a TBR. So I have some books from the library. These two are both from the library. The Fender Me Fix Up, I'm about halfway through this book. I really like, this is just a cute fluffy romance. And then The Partner Plot by Christina Forrest. This is a new book. It just came out a couple of months, like this past month. So, oh, and then The Fender Me Fix Up is by Yara St. John. And then this book, I picked this up. I was at Books a Million again for the second time. And I saw this because there's a black girl on it. And I picked it up. This is about a girl who is trying to find herself um, because she wants to be a dancer, but her, and she goes, like, she's going off to college and she wants to be a dancer. And her family doesn't want her to dance. They want her to do something else. So she's trying to just find her way. So from the library. This is the other library book. A love song for Ricky Wilde. I want to read this. Magical realism is the thing. I just, I'm worried that I'm not going to like it. But I did like my last Tia Williams book, which was Seven Days in June that I read. Um, 
yeah but I do want to read that and then this is another book that I want to read um The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up if you don't know I am a minimalist and I think I just need to get back to my minimalist roots and just kind of like give myself like a fresh update so I want to reread this book this month in April there's also like I said there's, there's two fantasies that I want to read oh I want to read the second book in the um the series that I was talking about the the romance series. So the first book is Where We Found Our Home. I think the second book is Where We Found Our Heart. The Found series by Natasha Bishop. Yep. Where We Found Our Heart is the second book. And then there's a third book, Where We Found Our Passion. So I wanted to start reading that next book as well. I think we're just going to go with a mood reading vibe this month and not just be super strict about it. But I would definitely have to read the library books because I borrowed them from the library. So gonna do that. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this video we talked about what I read in March if you are a big reader and you enjoy reading please follow me on Goodreads and I'll follow you back so we can talk about books and the love of books and just all the books that we want to read because reading is just so fun it's so fun and it's just and it teaches you things I think that I love that a lot about reading that I get to learn so much just from reading a book just from doing something enjoyable and it also calms me it just makes me happy I love reading I just I love reading so yeah that's it for this video guys I'm gonna clean up now and um yeah I'll catch you guys in the next video if you haven't seen my last video of my March TBR or my my February reading wrap up I will link them on the screen and if you haven't subscribed to my channel I do videos on healthy intentional living and that includes living your life intentionally and living healthy and reading of course it's pretty much just my channel and my tv <laughs> thanks for watching this video guys and i'll see you in my next one bye